The Greek word for return is nostos. Algos means suffering, so nostalgia is the suffering caused by an unappeased yearning to return. Melan kundera. When prose crumbles, it will break into poetry. Ocean Vong. In 2019, the Vietnamese-American poet and essayist Ocean Vuong released his first novel on Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. The novel is an experiment with structure and storytelling. Vuong said in an interview that year at the International Literature Festival in Berlin that he built the story based on the Japanese storytelling structure known as Kisho Tenketsu. So the story is broken down into four parts. Key, the introduction, in which we discover the nature of the characters and the limitations of the setting. Show, the development, in which the motions of the story draws us in. Ten, the turn or twist that was foreshadowed throughout but is nonetheless unexpected. And finally, Ketsu, which is the outcome where everything comes to fruition. So this is a work of fiction. But in some ways it reads like non-fiction. It's sort of like him writing both from his own perspective growing up in America as a Vietnamese gay man, but it's also him writing from the perspective of his mother in second person. So he's showing some scenes in which he's recreated things that his mother would have done to show that he has thought back over the way that she's had to grow and live and he's reflecting on that and showing her forgiveness for things that she's done and at the same time with contrast to her and her struggling to get by and trying to keep their family afloat there's also chapters of the main protagonist sort of going out into the world and yeah experimenting with his sexuality and discovering the depths of his queer experience and how strange everything in the world is i guess though so there are some ways where it seems to be drawing on his real life it's written in a very sort of reflective voice so um it feels like he is in the future already he's seen it all and he's telling us the story, giving his own future impressions of everything that's happened. So I'll give you an example of this in a passage. Um, on page 102, for context, um, he and Trevor, they work together. They sort of do like, yeah, manual labor. And Trevor is the love interest of the book, they're teenagers. And so in this part, you can see the future voice really enter into the story. Don't be weird, Trevor said, sitting up. He grabbed the World War II army helmet off the floor and put it back on, the one he was wearing the day I met him. I keep seeing that helmet, but this can't be right. The boy, impossibly American and alive in the image of a dead soldier. It's too neat, so clean a symbol I must have made it up. And even now, in all the pictures I looked through, I can't find him wearing it. Yet here it is, tilted to hide Trevor's eyes, making him seem anonymous and easy to look at. I studied him like a new word. His reddish lips stuck out from the helmet's visor. The Adam's apple, oddly small, a blip in a line drawn by a tired artist. It was dark enough for my eyes to swallow all of him without ever seeing him clearly. Like eating with the lights off, it still nourished, even if you didn't know where your body ends. Don't be weird. I wasn't looking at you, I said, diverting my gaze. I was just thinking. Look, the radio's working again. He played with the knob on the handheld radio in his lap, and the static intensified. Then a robust and urgent voice poured into the space between us. Nice, we're back in this. He struck his palm with his fist, teeth clenched, a grayish flash under the helmet. He was looking up, visualizing the game, the feel of his blue and gray patriots. Are we close? I asked, not knowing what I meant. The voices roared, straining through the crackle. Yeah, I think we got this. You can see in that scene that there's a lot of sort of tension between the characters. It also seems slightly one-sided because the protagonist, little dog, he sort of seems to yearn a lot more for Trevor, but Trevor seems more afraid of his feelings. 
So a lot of the book, it does feel sort of like you're wading through the memories of the protagonist, because he's constantly in a reflective state, and things in this story aren't necessarily exactly what happened. Sort of like he's remembering these things, but with his future self, he's bringing more sort of meaning into the past, because he's rethought it so many times. You know how overthinkers, like I'm one of these sorts of people as well, we sort of constantly look back on events and rewrite them in our heads and stuff so that we can sort of try to understand things better and grasp the reality and I guess it's a way to sort of make reality seem less intense. And so with that passage I read out, he's talking about how he wasn't even sure that Trevor even had a helmet on in the first place. But that's just how he remembers it, and that's how the image has held in his head. Because it just seems to match so well with his memories. And so throughout the whole book, there is this constant reflection, and he's trying to understand who he was back then, and how that relates to who he is now. And the book, all in all, is very much about the brevity of life, and how moments can be so small, and yet have such a large impact on you and the way that you perceive the world and the people around you. And for Little Dog, he sees Trevor as a very brief sort of moment in his life, and yet that briefness was so beautiful in those times when they were together. But despite it all, he's in the future now. In a lot of ways, he's still going back to these moments that were so important in the way that his perceptions of the world were formed. And in a way, it's an attestment to the cruelty of life, but in another way, it's about finding the beauty in horrible things. And there's actually a quote from Ocean Vong um, about the way that he writes. He said, when prose crumbles, it will break into poetry. He said this in the interview that I spoke about earlier. So that's very much the approach that he uses to writing this book, is that he's breaking down the prose in order to inject his metaphors in, in order to get his emotions and his feelings towards these characters across, along with the story itself. Which I think is a really intriguing way to write, and it makes it for a very sort of mesmerizing piece. And because it is more literary instead of literal, there is... Yeah, words between the lines, so you have to look into it and take what you can from what's being given to you. And it does make it a learning sort of read, and I think books like this do make people think more on themselves, and that's why they're so important. If you want to write though, and you want to write well, it's important to read books that sort of make you expand on your imagination, because that's where your stories come from, you know, they're all in that little imaginative abyss in your little... Noggin. To conclude, I really think that this is one of the most important books of the last couple years. I think everyone should pick up a copy because whilst it's not perfect, because nothing is perfect, it is gorgeous. I think that a lot of people could get some great meaning from it, especially queer people who have struggled with their lives and need something to relate back to. So yeah, that's all from me today. Thank you for tagging along once again. Um, I haven't planned my next video yet, so anything could happen. Thank you. Bye.